Okay, we want to solve and write our answer in interval notation. The problem that we're solving here is an inequality, but it's an inequality involving higher powers. This is a special process uh, that we're going to use in order to solve this. What you don't want to do is you don't want to do x minus 5 less than 0, x plus 2 squared is less than 0. That's not the correct way of solving that. You're not going to get the complete answer if you do that. So you don't want to do that process. Instead, there's going to be the way to solve this is by using two different methods. The first method is a table method, which a lot of textbooks include. And the other one is a shortened version of that, which is a number line method. Both answers will get you the correct answer. Um, but you have to use one of those two processes in order to solve something like this. What we're really doing here is we're saying what part of the graph is below the x-axis? Because if you think of this as less than zero, that means you're looking what part of the graph is actually falls below uh, the x-axis, and that's eventually what we're going to be using this for. So uh, to solve this, what you're going to do is you're going to we'll do it by the table method first. So first we have to set up our table. Okay, so the table is going to evolve each of these pieces exactly the way you see them there. So x minus five. And the other one is going to be x plus 2. So I'm, I'm putting these in exactly the way they originally were. So here's the x minus 5 one. We start with that one. Notice that I, I want to put the power of 2 on that. I do want to include that one. So a common mistake would be that somehow the, the exponents get ignored and they don't end up being part of it. We definitely want to include that. Now the alternative, if you don't want to use a power, then we could write this as x plus 2 and x plus 2, and that just means that you're going to have x plus 2 and another x plus 2 down on your table. But instead of doing it that way, let's just use what's displayed here. One of them is x minus 5, the other one is x plus 2 with the square on it. Now, we need to figure out how the table is going to be divided up. I have to figure out how many columns I'm going to have. The way you do that is you're going to look at each of these pieces and you want to tell what number makes each individual part equal to zero? Well, if I set that equal to zero, I'm going to get x is equal to five, and I'm going to get x is equal to negative two. So I kind of imagine that there's an equal sign here, and you just set each individual one equal to zero. So five would make that part zero, and negative two will make uh, the other part equal to zero. So now that we have that, that's going to tell me uh, how many lines I'm going to draw on my table. So therefore, I'm going to draw this one. This one is the first number I have, and this is going to represent the second one. You want to always put these in order from smallest to largest. So negative 2, we're going to start with that one, and then 5 is going to go down here. You always want to create one more column than where the last number was. So the last number here was 5. I create one more column on the end. So when we look at the whole thing, we have this. I've got, I've got three different columns here to fill in. The first one has my two pieces that I originally had. I have negative 2 and I have 5 down here. That's how the column is split up. And I have all these spaces that are in here. So these spaces are going to be getting filled in with either a plus sign or a minus sign. The way you can tell if it's going to be plus or minus is you're going to pick test numbers. So I'm going to pick a number that is less than negative 2 a number that's between negative 2 and 5, and another number that's beyond 5. I'll take those numbers, put them into what I have here on the column, and then that'll tell me uh, you're positive or negative, and that's going to be what I'll use to get my answer. So what I do is I'll first do a test number over here. I'm going to test negative 3. It doesn't really matter what number you pick, as long as the number is less than, it has to be less than negative 2. So I can use negative 400, it doesn't matter as long as that number is less than negative 2. So now that I have this, what you do is you're going to put negative 3 into these two expressions and you're going to indicate whether you get a positive or a negative number as a result. Negative 3 goes in here, negative 3 minus 5, that gives you a negative number, so I'm going to put a negative there in that first part on uh, the table. Negative 3 goes in this one. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, but we're squaring it, so you're going to get a positive number as a result. So next, I want to test the number between negative 2 and 5. So for here, I'm going to test 0. It doesn't matter. Any number between negative 2 and 5 is going to work. I just picked 0 because it's easy to plug in and get answers. 0 into this one. 0 minus 5, negative. 0 plus 2 is 2. Squared is 4. That's also positive. 
Now I'm testing a number that is greater than five. So I'm gonna test six. Six is gonna go into each of these. I have six minus five, that's positive. Six plus two is eight squared. That's a positive number as a result as well. So now I've completed the entire table. What you're gonna do after that is you're going to multiply down through each of these and we're gonna get a final sign configuration for each one. If I take negative times a neg negative times a positive, I get negative. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the result across the top here. So I get a negative as a result there when I multiply those together. If I multiply these, I get a negative result. If I multiply these, I get a positive result. So I end up with the final sign configuration is gonna be this one. So now that I have that complete, this is how I'm gonna write my answer with interval notation. This right here is gonna tell you whether you're looking for positive values or negative values. If it's less than zero, you're looking for negative values. If it's greater than zero, numbers that are greater than zero are gonna be positive and you'll include that. Now in this problem, I have a less than zero there. So that means that I need to pick the regions that have negatives in it. So there's this region and then there's this region. You look at your, your numbers down below here and the reason why I circled these test numbers is so I don't get confused with the numbers that are originally on my line. I don't want to ever use test numbers as part of my interval. I want to use the numbers that I originally put down to break up my columns. So I have a negative two that's here. So one um, interval is going to be negative infinity to negative two. And then I have negative two to five and that would, that would complete my uh, two intervals, the two intervals that happen to be negative. So what you might be wondering is, well, why couldn't I, can I just do negative infinity all the way up to five? Well, the answer to that is gonna be no, and the reason why is because this is a less than, but not less than or equal to zero, which means that when it actually equals zero, I don't wanna actually include that as part of my answer. So if I put negative two into the original one, that gives me a zero for the whole thing, but zero is not gonna be included because I don't have an equal sign that comes underneath that one. So because of that reason, I'm not including negative two at my answer, which is why I, I need to break this up into two different intervals, from negative infinity to negative two, and then from two, negative two to five. So that, that's my answer for this problem. All that's saying is it says that in order to make this equation true, my values for x have to either be less than two or they have to be between negative two and five. That's the only way that I'll be able to get this equation to, to be correct. So this is the table method. So if you don't like the table method, there's another method we can use to solve this, and that's gonna be using the number line method. Okay, so number line method is the next one. Number line, what you do is you draw a number line and you put your values down for each one. I had negative two and I had five that I solved for originally when I set that equal to zero. So this is, a, this is another method, different from this method, different method for solving this one. So here's my two numbers that I have a number line here. Now you're still gonna be using your test points just as before. We test negative three, test zero, and test six. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm writing, I'm, I'm circling these and I'm pushing them down. I'm, I'm writing them below the other ones. The reason why is more for when you get your answer. A lot of times if you, if you just put negative three here, then it's easy to make a mistake and go from negative infinity to negative three and have it go to your test number instead of actually going to the number that's on your number line. So when you're writing these, it's probably better to circle them and put them down, do, so, do something to distinguish them from the other numbers up there so that way you don't accidentally put the wrong one down. Now, I'm gonna do the same test numbers I had before, except when I test it, I'm actually not gonna use the individual pieces. I wanna put that test thing into the entire thing all at once. So for instance, if I test negative three, for instance, I'm gonna put negative three into the whole entire formula that I had before. So the whole entire thing I have here, I'm putting it in there all at once. I wanna see if I get a positive number or a negative number as a result. So I get negative eight here, and I get negative one squared, and so I get negative eight as a result. That's a negative number, so therefore I'll put a negative right here for that part of the number line. Next, I'm gonna test zero. Zero goes into each one of those as well. Zero minus five, zero plus two squared. You get negative five, and then this is two squared, 
which is uh, 4. So you get negative 20 in there when you test 0. Okay, so then when you put 0, that, since that's less than, than 0, negative 20 is a negative number. Once again, I'm going to put negative in between there, between negative 2 and 5. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test 5. So I'm going to do put 5 into each of these. So I have, uh, actually 6, I'm sorry, 6 is the one we're testing. So I'm going to do 6 minus 5 and 6 plus 2 squared. That's 1 times 8 squared. That gives you 64. That's a positive number. So I'll put a plus here. So if, you didn't, if you're going to do it this method, you're still going to get exactly the same sign configuration as we got by using the table method, which means that my answer is going to be exactly the same. It just means that we're writing it out differently. Some people prefer this method because there's less writing. Some people like this because they can see more visually what's positive and what's negative when they multiply it out, but you can do either method. So in this case, the, uh, the, the number line method, all it does is it has less things that you're writing out. But just remember, if you are going to do it by number line, you have to put this into the entire expression all at once. But the nice thing about using the number line method is you get your final sign configuration at once and you can go directly to your answer instead of multiplying down and doing that where you could make a mistake extra. So both of these are acceptable methods for using it and you can use whatever one is most comfortable for you.